If you've ever Googled images of the presentation of Christ in the temple, you will no doubt be met by a lot of similar scenes, similar in that they are unrealistic, sanitized, inaccurate, paintings from centuries ago, pictures of rather pious looking people, usually with pale skin, often wearing fine clothes, and just halos around their heads. Sometimes a dog appears in the picture to give it a more domestic feel. The reality was, however, more gritty. Firstly, Mary and Joseph were not well off. Joseph was a simple carpenter, Mary a teenage mother. Forty days before, she had given birth in a stinky, smelly outhouse. In many respects, Mary and Joseph were just a family doing the usual things after a child is born. Moreover, the sacrificial birds they carried with them into the temple were the only offerings they could afford. Instead of the better sacrificial animals of one lamb and one turtle dove or pigeon, Joseph and Mary turned up with two pigeons, which would have been widely known and seen as a special concession for the poor. So despite the embellished images we've been exposed to, we can rely on the fact that this young couple were poor. When Mary and Joseph turned up with the pigeons, I wonder if they were scared, intimidated by the sheer size of the temple, which would have been a similar size to Fratton Park. I wonder if they were thinking, this isn't good, we're skint, this is a poor show, let's get this over with quickly, and now there's an old guy coming to tell us off. The temple was a busy place, so there were probably lots of other young couples in the same place, doing the same thing, feeling the same as Joseph and Mary felt, but approaching faithfully despite their fears and misgivings. Another fact that we can rely on is that Simeon and Anna were old. Luke says Anna was 84, such a great age for her time, a great age at any time. I've been told quite firmly by the elderly in the parish that old age is not for wimps, and Simeon and Anna weren't wimps either. Anna the prophetess reminds me of a lady called Anne I used to see at church. Whenever I asked how she was, she would usually reply, I'm ABH, alive, breathing and hobbling. Luke gives us just a few hints about Simeon and Anna, but enough for us to know that they have endured a long time of faithful waiting. Simeon must have blessed countless babies and seen hundreds of young couples come and go in the temple during his lifetime. Anna, in all her praying and fasting, must have witnessed that too, so that for Simeon and Anna there was nothing unusual about the couple and their baby being in the temple. Whilst the gospel stories are neatly arranged for us readers, to know who the baby Jesus is in the scene at the temple. It is not so for Simeon and Anna. They haven't followed a star, or been visited by angels, or seen the fanfare of Magi. They have come to this knowledge of God incarnate, the hard way, the long way, the faithful way. They have borne many things, endured many things. And that is, I think, most people. Most of us don't get visited by angels. We all have all lived through times of uncertainty and loss of not having life on our own terms or in our own way. To quote a pop song, feathers have fallen from our wings, weather has rained on our dreams, and like Anna and Simeon, we long for better days, we long for a more peaceful, more just world. Our faith emboldens us to hope for that. The good news is that God calls us as we are. If we don't believe that, then look at who he chose to bring his only son into the world, a poor couple who had their baby in an outhouse and a manger for a cradle. Yes, I've been told old age is not for wimps. Well, faith is not for wimps either. Faith requires a readiness to follow in the spirit of the one we follow, glad, thankful, knowing there will be bumps in the road ahead. So alive, breathing or hobbling, in sickness, health, in youth, in old age, in our present state, whether there's money in our pocket for pigeon or lamb, whether fearful or fearless, whether alone or in company, as we are, God calls, God welcomes, and asks us to remain faithful in whatever lies ahead.